เอาละค่ะในเซสชันถัดไปนะคะเราจะกลับมาพูดกันในเรื่องของ NFT นะคะหลายๆคนทราบอยู่แล้วว่า NFT ในยุคแรกๆเนี่ยเป็นการยืนยันความเป็นเจ้าของนะคะซึ่งไม่สามารถเอาไปดัดแปลงหรือทำซ้ำได้นะคะแล้วก็เอามาพัฒนาเป็น NFT Collection นะคะที่บุคคลทั่วไปสามารถนำไปใช้เป็นโปรไฟล์พิกเจอร์ตามโซเชียลสเตตัสต่างๆนะคะแต่ทุกวันนี้ทุกท่านจะเห็นว่าแบรนด์ต่างๆมีการนำเอาเทคโนโลยีตัวนี้อย่าง NFT เนี่ยมาใช้ในการเพิ่มคุณค่าของแบรนด์เพิ่ม customer experience นะคะผ่านในช่องทางการมาร์เก็ตติ้งมากยิ่งขึ้นซึ่งจะบอกว่าในอนาคตนะคะ utility ของ NFT จะถูกนำไปใช้ในทิศทางไหนบ้างการพัฒนาการของ NFT จะไปเป็นในทิศทางไหนต่อไปนะคะเรามาฟังการพูดกันในเซสชันถัดไปเลยดีกว่านะคะในหัวข้อที่9นะคะ evolution of NFT วิวัฒนาการของ NFT ค่ะและในช่วงนี้นะคะจะมีการพูดคุยเป็นภาษาอังกฤษนะคะท่านไหนที่ต้องการหูฟังแปลภาษาไทยเป็นอังกฤษอังกฤษเป็นไทยนะคะสามารถไปรับหูฟังแปลภาษาได้ที่ทางเข้านะคะวางบัตรประชาชนแล้วก็หรือว่าพาสปอร์ตไว้ก็ได้เหมือนกันนะคะมีแปลได้ทั้ง2ภาษาเลยล่ามตู้ของเรากำลังทำหน้าที่อยู่แล้วก็ด้านหลังนะคะจะมีเป็น Visual Note นะคะที่ทุกท่านสามารถไปดูได้จาก BBC Asia นะคะสรุปเซสชันต่างๆทั้ง2วันไว้เลยนะคะแต่ก็สปิเกอร์ของเราได้พร้อมอยู่บนเวทีแล้วนะคะเพราะฉะนั้นขอเชิญทุกคนนะคะ please welcome คุณดิชมากรบุญสิริสกุล Marketing and Communication Executive Crypto Mind Group Mr. k r i a n g Chan, founder and CEO of Aura Network, and Mr. g r a b e l Yang, director ARC. Um, k u n d i t m a g o n will be the moderator. So please welcome everyone. ขอเสียงปรบมือด้วยค่ะ Hello. สวัสดีค่ะ Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all enjoying yourselves at the biggest blockchain event in Thailand. I am Diksha b u n s r i s a k o l From Crypto Mind Group, and I will be your moderator for this session. Today's topic: We're going to talk about the evolution of NFTs. As the audience here ranges from people who are into crypto, crypto enthusiasts, developers, institutions, we also have people in the general audience, general public, who might have little to no knowledge about blockchain and NFTs. So we'd like to take the session to take a little step back to get back into the basics of NFTs, so that you, we can educate you all. And so we'd like to start with the past, present, and what we expect in the future in NFTs. So today, here I have with me two very important people in the Web3 space. So before we dive in, I'd like you guys to introduce yourselves a bit and tell us what you do, where you work at. Please, we we'll start with Jiang. Oh, hi everyone. Yeah. Uh, first, first of all, I, I'm very, very happy to to be here in Thailand. It's very amazing event, and yeah, it's have a good chance to share more about yeah Web3 or share more about NFT. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I'm the founder of our network, and I also working for blockchain in, in for quite a long time to support the transforming to Web2 to Web3, Web2 to Web3. Also, some Chinese in the business, I, I try to to advise them to or also bring the Chinese in the business to Web3. We, we're very support for NFT as well. So for our currently, we're also building uh, something like the, uh, the L1 blockchain support fully for NFT. Also the technical for NFT and also trying to bring the real life use case to NFT as well. And also we, we also based in the Cosmos ecosystem as well. Yeah, so very happy to be here and yeah, nice to sharing more about NFT, everything about NFT as well. Yeah. Uh, hi everyone. Good afternoon. Happy Sunday. Uh, my name is Gabriel. Uh, based, born and bred Singapore. Uh, kind of started crypto 2016. That's probably where a lot of us probably started from. Uh, but actively working in crypto since uh, 2017. Uh, stumbled into it actually. Uh, currently, what I'm doing is I am working for Arc. Arc is a members base, kind of like a members club. Uh, community. Uh, we're based in Asia. That's where our strengths, our connections, our relationships lie. Um, we have both uh, online experiences via a mobile app, our Discord, etc., etc. Uh, we have offline experiences, which is kind of like networking events um, that happens um, all around Asia currently. Uh, with the project's been about two years old. Um, only in the last 10 months, we've created this um, NFT gated concept. So basically, uh, we use NFTs in Arc uh, as a means of token gating. 
uh, access um, into the community. Uh, but before that, there's kind of like an application process and a screening process before. Uh, currently, we have about 2,500 members on our free tier, which is the Soulbound token. Um, then on our top tier, we've got about 350 members, uh, which we call the Arc Stella holders. Yeah, that's uh, about it. Um, past experiences, um, I used to run crypto conferences, um, Career Blockchain Week, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, last year, I was part of the uh, FinTech Innovation Group uh, within the Singapore Central Bank, better known as MAS, uh, where I also worked on the Singapore FinTech Festival and um, a DeFi paper, which we did called Project Guardian. So yes, that's it. Thank you. So here we have our founder and CEO, and we have the director here. Yep. So, uh, can you guys tell us about your career path or how your journey started into the crypto in the NFT space, and what was NFT like back back in the day? Mm, uh, can you repeat the last the last question? So, t uh, can you tell us about your career path and your journey into the Web three space, and when you first joined, how how was NFT back in the day? Like, what were NFTs? What were considered NFTs back in the day? How, how far back are we going on this? When you first joined. We didn't care. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I mean, like, 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 I, I, I'm sure Jack has a, has a very good, um, has, I mean, we were talking about this um, in the room and everything, but um, I think when a lot of us knew about NFTs, the first project any of us thought about was probably CryptoKitties. Right, mm -hmm. right. 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 And, and to be honest, it was crap. Right. I mean, it seemed like an interesting idea and everything like that. But like everything just started crashing. The the, the server couldn't take the load. Nobody really understood what it was. It just felt like a cool thing at a point of time. Um, we we kind of like from a theoretical aspect, we kind of understood the potential uh, for NFTs. They seemed very interesting. Um, they they you know I mean it's like right, it's non fungible. Right. It's it's a non fungible token. It, it could yeah, represent right. something. Identity, for example. Uh, did we expect fast forward, and this is like what, 2017, 2018? Did we expect things to be where they are today? Kind of, but in the way they are, I, I, I think none of us really, really anticipated that, you know, you know, fast forward today, we'll be talking about Azuki's, Apes, Arc, you know, Aura, et cetera, et cetera. So, so I think the, the journey for NFT, yeah, you are right. You are starting with the Crypto Kitty. So now is your Crypto Punk, as many things, many projects like this. So uh, NFT was started in Ethereum. So now is, there is many blockchain and also many chain support for NFT as well, like Solana, like yeah, Aptos, like many, many, and also Aura as well. Uh, so basically, we can understand that every NFT is growing. It's a kind of proof of ownership. It's growing for the technology. It's growing for everything. But in the past, everything is just starting like the PFE, like the collectible, like something is just art. But now, I think that the NFT was showing things like many, many kind of use case and it support a lot for the real life, I think so. So, for example, you, you can take a look at the NBA Top Shot as well. Yeah, it's a very good project. We can support and we can buy the NFT to support our idol. We can buy at the moment. And currently, there is many kind of projects like this. So, it's an evolution and it's a new chain for NFT. It's totally the different business uh, between NFT and the crypto, I think so. Token, I think, I think it's... Yeah, I think NBA Top Shop is a very good example because right. uh, they really managed to pull on people's heartstrings because you're talking about sports fans, right? One of the things that uh, the Top Shop guys have done very, very well is the ability to like um, own a moment. So many basketball fans, right? And obviously now you see the evolution into, you know, not just football, but you look at the New Zealand All Blacks in rugby, the rugby union. Uh, looking at the same things as well because they're also beginning to say that. I mean, you know, obviously um, the World Cup is on right now. You look at um, the FIFA World Cup, Algorand and the FIFA moments uh, where people can win. You can even use credit card to pay. Uh, so yeah, there, there, there is that, 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 that so-called evolution of, you know, moments and the whole fandom, uh, which probably didn't exist in the past. Yeah, so in the past, it might be more focused on more like digital art, JPEGs, like we said, crypto kitties, crypto punks. But slowly we saw um, other projects maybe more community driven, like Basie, Board Ape Yacht, or Azuki, Clonex. And we also saw more like brands coming in. Like I said, Clonex, Nike was involved. So how do you think it was uh, different back in the day and more today? Or like what was the key success factor to, to these projects? Hmm. I think it is a very good question. I want to share more. Yeah. So you can see that in the past, so, so from now, uh, the NFT is building the community, to building the culture as well. So for example, some projects like Ape, yeah, okay, Aizuki, they're building the culture, they're building the religion of uh, the project. 
So there is many fans to support the project and also support the, the style of the NFT project. But we also look at Nike. So Nike have many fans, right? Nike had many fans. So all, all the, some idols, some other idol celebrities, they also have many fans. So if Nike creating NFT and also celebrity creating their NFT, the fan also support. So we can matching. We do a very good matching that the NFT is start with the community and the community driven. So in the real life and also in the traditional business, the community also driving for everything. So I think it's a very good. Yeah. I, I think also one 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 evolution. Um, and if you look at um, beyond just Web three, if you look at Instagram, for example, right? Um, I I was I wanted to use it as an example, but my mind is blocked. Uh, that Italian lady, the influencer. Um, Falaji or something, I can't remember her name. Um, but but or even Irene Kim from, from Korea uh, is a very convenient example as well, which is that communities are, are, have become brands. That's why I, I think that's also one of the cases, right? Where um, the, the, it's no longer just brands by themselves selling to all of us. It's also our communities have become the brand where that, that whole um, you know, fusion and, and intertwinement of, of what a community represents um, and brands. Actually, another example besides that, um, yeah. you look at punks, right? Why did LVMH and, and Tiff and Co work with crypto punks, right? Two reasons, because they know that the, the, the punks now, crypto punks now represents a community, which is a brand. And like it or not, it's also a community with people with a lot of money, right? So, you know, brands are also looking for ways to always make money, new ways to make money. Right? At the end of the day, we have to also acknowledge that this is also, there's also a very commercially driven motivation there and there's nothing wrong with it. And therefore, they are also looking at all these kind of avenues, um, you know, to basically boost the revenue streams. Nike, in fact, I think made an announcement, right? That I think half their revenues or something over the last three quarters, you know, as a result of, of uh, the, the, the relationship with Clonex, Artifact, etc., etc. as well. Yeah, thank you. And, um, Following that, we also started seeing not too long ago that maybe like some meme projects started becoming hype in the NFT world. For example, uh, Goblin Moonbirds, Town. Goblin Town, yes, where people would just get onto Twitter spaces and make like these weird noises. At first, I didn't actually even believe that it happened. And then I saw the news and my friends were talking about it. And then I went on it and I was like, oh, wow, it actually happened. So like, what, what do you think happened there? Was it like, did memes started become, becoming really hype in the NFT world? And, and do you think it's going to stay or is it just something that comes and goes? I don't know. Um, I, I think one thing none of us would really, really dare to do is to predict, right? It's kind of like saying when Goblin Town first launched, everybody was like, what the hell is this, right? And I think for that few weeks, especially leading up to um, NFT NYC, it, it just really, really took off. I think it's something nobody really expected. Actually, a better example to that would be crypto dick bites um, as well, right? Where uh, the floor price is very strong. Uh, it's got a great community. Uh, it's got a community of some of the, the, I mean, if you look at crypto, Arthur Hayes has crypto dick butts. Melton DeMorris has crypto dick butts. You know, just as two very significant icons in the space, right? But one thing I do realize is that, um, and I, I really don't know whether to stay or go, but I do believe that it's kind of like a cult, you know, where they have their own type of traditions. They have their own type of rituals and everything that kind of somehow rather binds people together. Right? You've got a whole group of people that really just say that, you know what, this is our thing, right? Um, Meltem, literally, like, whenever anybody buys kind of like one of those red crypto dick butts, right? She goes on the Twitter spaces and she blesses the person as if it's a church or something like that. And, and we may find it very cheesy, but people actually lap up all these rituals and they feel as if they're part of the family. So, you know, like it or not, and it's not our, my place to judge, but like it or not, people actually make this, you know, they, they, it makes people feel as if they're part of something. And as long as that feeling exists, I think it's not up to us to judge or predict whether, you know, this is a fad, this is a passing phase, will it evolve into something else? Because honestly, um, I don't know. I mean, case in point, you know, I was offered punks at 0 0.5 and I was like, you know, what the hell is this? You know, I passed on it, right? So 
I think when it comes to not just NFT but Web3 in general, it, it's really hard to predict because it's the people that you know dictate you know whether this thing still remains or not and everything like that. Right. Yeah. You know, it, it's still very new and it's mm. maybe not fair for us to also predict or judge mm. what, why people are in this community at the same time. It, it can be very artistic or very personal Correct. to different people. Yep. Yep. So I think for me, uh, I just have a different look. Yeah. So everyone just look about yeah, the market, every, everything, but I just look about the future of NFT. So we can think that NFT it should be the kind of the digital assets. So maybe in the, in the near future or in the far future, maybe the world we, we, we may be out of some material like the gold, like some assets, right? So we, we, we should take a look at the next generation. So as the younger, it should use more the digital assets. So I'm looking forward that in the, in the, in the future, so everyone should use the NFT, I think so. So that is the thing. Everything can be the mass adoption for NFT. So I just look in the future. So NFT should be like this, and should be like uh, digital assets as well, and it support a lot of things. So yeah, don't worry about NFT. I think so. We should not predict everything about the volume. We should not predict everything about the market. We just think more that how we use NFT and how the way you, you, people use NFT. I think so. Right, and that probably starts from educating the general public about what they are and what they can do. Yeah. I, I just just to add on, I think I think it's it's a bit tough to decide what exactly you can do mm -hmm. with, with NFTs. Yeah. Um, I think it's really up, you, it's up to the creativity of the people. It's up to the creativity of the community. Nobody would, you know, creating the tech does not mean that the utility or the rituals or the purpose of it is necessarily dictated by the NFT. It's also dictated by, you know, the founders, the community that, that has the buy-in to the NFT as well, that actually dictates how the, the community would go and, and everything like that, right? Like, would anybody say that BAYC would become a Lamborghini club, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> I think nobody would expect expected that, right? Uh, but, or, or, or would you expect that, you know, uh, BAYC would have like breakaway factions um, here in Bangkok, right? Or even in Hong Kong as well, right? I think Hong Kong, they, they call themselves the what, elite BAYC or, or something like that. It's a bunch of Ferrari driving, 25-year-olds um, and everything like that, right? I don't know how you drive a Ferrari around Hong Kong. It's a genuine question uh, if you've seen the traffic there. Um, and, and yeah, I, I think it really is. It's, it's not just a, a technological innovation, but I think it's also an innovation of creativity uh, when it comes to like how can, you know, people make use of this community as well, right? And, and a lot of times this is driven by commercials, right? But at the same time, and, and Jiang says it very well, is the new generation. You know, maybe it's the new generation's uh, way of identifying, you know, themselves. You know, you see it in Singapore yep. uh, with the crypto banks, um, Kaiju. You know, Kaiju is a, is, a, is, a, is a U.S. project, right? But, you know, outside of the U.S., the strongest, com one of the strongest community of Kaiju Kings is in Singapore, right? And what do they do? They're just a bunch of friends go out and play bowling and sing KTV every day, right? But, you know, they feel happy and all, all love and respect to that. Right. Yeah, so it can, I feel like it's also, uh, the beauty of it is also in, like, where you can meet anyone, you can meet people from anywhere in the world and, you know, it, they, they can use NFTs as their identity. You know, you see these JPEGs, they put it, they put it as their profile picture, and you actually mm -hmm. don't even know that behind that photo, or are, are you talking to a male or a female, mm -hmm. or, you know, f someone from which part of the world, and, and I think that's, like, a beauty of it, and the new generation might actually feel more relatable to that. I, I think Web3 is, is the great equalizer. Right? Not just about whether you're male, female, somewhere in between, it doesn't really matter. Web3 is the great equalizer because whether, like what Ark is doing, and not trying to shill, but like we've got a mobile app, right? Um, and, and it doesn't matter. Everybody's the same, right? In, in any platform, whether you're on Twitter, whatever it is, anyways the same, right? If you want to talk about the negative side, a 20-year-old can be a keyboard warrior, right? Criticizing every single project or every single thing out there. Not a problem at all. Right? Mm -hmm. And you can't, you know, I don't know, find out who he is and call his mother or something like that. You can't, right? But at the same time, you know, the same will apply from a positive perspective. If I'm a billionaire, 
right? And I want to get connected with a certain group of people because it benefits me or because maybe because I'm just curious, right? There's no judgment in that as well, right? Whereas in, in kind of like in a real world perspective, there's always going to be that flex, right? There's always going to be like, you know, you're driving a freaking Toyota Yaris, I'm driving a Lamborghini. We're not going to be friends, right? Yeah. Nobody's going to, you know, and that, that's the truth, right? But with, with, with Web3 communities, you, you don't have that. Everybody has a common purpose. That's why you're part of, at least I would like to believe, um, everybody has that common purpose together, you know, you know and, and it doesn't matter, right? And I'm not even want to talk about like people flipping NFTs. I, I think that's understandable and I think that's very normal, right? Um, I think a lot of NFT projects have um, very negative connotations towards flippers. To me, it's, it's, it is, it's part of the game, right? It's trying to it's like, you know, like last bull market, right? If Bitcoin is 60,000, you know, some people want to hold it for the long term, sure, by all means. But if you want to sell it, all respect to you, especially if you bought it at 10K. Same thing as well, if you hold an NFT, you bought it for 0.5 ETH, it goes up to 10 ETH, right? You know, any, almost in every single, single city in Asia, 10 ETH is life changing amount of money, right? At least for a few years. It pays you through college or something like that. If you want to flip the NFT, by all means, right? I think that's totally fine as well. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like, a tool that's available for you and you know if you're able to pick that up and use it beneficial for yourself and you're not harming anyone i think that's totally understandable as well yeah mm -hmm. but jiang's a jiang's a very good art collector nfts he's super passionate about it yeah so so he's he, I, I actually love the art so yeah. yeah i try to collect and i try to support nft I, but I, I want to share with you one interesting thing when i uh, bring nft to some of uh, my partner in vietnam yeah Thus, uh, I have a, a, a big partner in Vietnam. They are one of the biggest ecosystem in Vietnam. And when I bring NFT to support them, it, an interesting thing, they save 5% of the cost for the marketing. And all, also for human resources, uh, expand, you know, because they save the cost because they do not need to create the certificate by the real. They create by NFT, so they save a lot of cost. Yes, yeah, so NFT, you can see that they say support a lot for business. Not only for collection, not only for trading, not only for, for yeah, bringing the, 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 the cash, but they, they save and they, they support for business. So I think, yeah, see what uh, NFT can support. I think there is my interesting question, uh, interesting story. Yeah, I tell you uh, about uh, something like this. Right, so uh, we've talked about how you know, NFTs has changed a lot over time with the JPEGs, more community driven, more brands, influencers, and we also see more like IP NFTs. And we also recently saw like uh, Cristiano Ronaldo on Binance NFT. I think that also brought a lot of awareness to, to the world about NFTs. So what do you think is the next step for NFTs? Like, what do you think, um, what else could become an NFT next? All right, I, I think that the NFT is now, everyone just know that it's just a collectible, it's just a PFB, it's just an art. But yeah, for the new and the futures of NFT, it, it should be something like the more utility for NFT. We can use NFT everywhere. For example, we can use NFT in game, we can use NFT in some software. We can use NFT for human resources or many things like this. Is the first thing. The second thing is now the technology was shown to support NFT creating more utility and more value because, for example, some project can creating the, the cross-chain NFT and like the multi-chain project. So one NF NFT can use is many kinds of project. We can send NFT in another project. So we keep the value for NFT. We keep the um, utility for NFT and we're creating the new utility for NFT as well. It's like a cross-bridging. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, I think, I th actually, if you ask me, I think that's very, very needed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. cross-chain, cross-application. Yeah, right. Why not cross application? So now we can sending an NFT from one application to another application. It's very important. I think so. And for utility of the NFT, so currently many things and bring on like the music. Yeah. So you can see there's many kind of music NFT. Okay. So you can see that uh, people can use NFT like certification, many things. NFT for donation, NFT for many things. Yeah. So that is an evolution. And also that is a new things for NFT. I think so. We bring more for utility or NFT. There is new technology. So we will have more technology to support NFT as well. More secure, right? Yeah. I think, yeah, I do, I, think, I do agree. I think we need better storage. Yep. Better, better ways of, of, for people to hold NFTs without having to educate people to download a metal mask and then two days later they lose their seed phrase yep. or something like that. But yeah, 
I, I, I do think that's needed. But I also, I also think that the, the evolution or, or what we hope to see is not just the, the technology uh, and actually, you know, following up to what Jiang said, um, there's, and just to put a thought, um, actually never asked, you know, I don't know how many of you over here are working on F NFTs, for example, but um, one of the things that I hear a lot the last couple of months is fusing of NFTs. So for example, and, and please don't, don't, don't hate me on Twitter for this, but like, can I fuse Azuki uh, with a BAYC, right? Um, and the purpose of that is that basically, instead of me holding two NFTs, I fuse them together, they become something else, right? Uh, because, you know, shared utility, cross utility, everything like that. Um, and, as, uh, and, 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 you know, the fuse could even be kind of like a, a standard duration, 60 days or something like that. And that 60 days as a reward for you to fuse your NFTs, you get a certain form of token. I know it sounds very Ponzi right now, but it, I oh, think yeah. it's interesting. I think it's interesting that these kind of things are, 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 coming, are coming up in the, in the conversation. But I think it's less also about the technology. I think it's also how NFT communities are actually evolving. That means NFTs stay the same. Right? They, they are what they are right now. But the ideas that come around it, right? Representation, mm -hmm. um, identification, um, you know, ticketing. I think ticketing is a very big thing. But besides that, and the reason why I say it's not a, techno it's not a technology of NFTs, I think the one thing everybody is now finally trying to solve is that how the hell do I actually create something that I can put on my phone or, or it's part of an existing app or something like that where you could store NFTs inside your wallet without it being it. I think Reddit did a very good job with that, you know, without calling it NFTs. Um, I, I think they put a lot of thought and work into all the language they used. But that's kind of like needed. I, I think that's really necessary. Like, how can I put, put this here inside? How can I get, you know, the first 100 people, the next 1,000, next 100,000 people to actually hold NFTs without even them being called NFTs? Um, I think that's going to be the next hurdle. Thank you. So uh, you mentioned more about like the user side. So uh, I want to dive a bit into that. Um, since you both work uh, in companies that are involved with NFT community, NFT platforms, uh, have you seen any changing trends in the people who are getting into this industry, in the NFT industry, in the Web3 space? It, uh, has there been any increasing trend recently in the past recent years? Recent years, that's very long. Recent years is like 10 years. And, and okay. <laughs> or, or maybe in the past one or two years. I think, everybody's in, I think everybody's in a little bit more cautious mood because of FTX. I'll be blunt about it, right? Right. Um, I, I think there's, there's, look, like it or not, NFTs and crypto are intertwined, right? I know there are a lot of crypto DeFi boys out there that will say that, you know what, we don't touch NFTs, NFTs are bullshit, we don't believe in it, right? Vice versa, NFT people I say that, you know what, the crypto guys, they don't understand communities, they don't understand the sense of purpose, blah, 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 blah. There's always going to be this division between both. I disagree with that. Um, like it or not, I think everything in the space is in the twine. At the end of the day, you can sell your punk right now for, I don't know, 200 ETH or whatever it is, but if ETH is $1,000, it's a terrible deal. Right, compared to selling it for, you know, hundred ETH and it was at four thousand dollars. So, it's intertwined, like it or not, right? And the base technology is all the same. Web three again is great equalizer with all things. Um, I think people, and and I don't like to throw this word too much out there. Utility, I think because of the market conditions, and let's just be honest with ourselves about it, the market conditions has forced everybody to rethink, right? Even within Arc, it's it's made us all rethink about what we are doing for, you know, our community. And let's be honest, let's replace the word community with customers because they are our customers, right? They are literally the ones that have bought, off any, bought you know, um, entered our community. They want to connect with us. They've bought, you know, our Arc Stellars, which are three ETH each and everything. They are customers, like it or not. Same with the Azukis, whatever it is, right? And at the end of the day is, what are we doing for our customers? Uh, what kind of value are we bringing? What do our customers want, right? They want to contribute, they want to co-create, they want to collaborate. Break it down. What, don't use big words. Break it down. What exactly are we doing? Executional steps. They don't care about the strategic part. Strategic part is our business. It's our problem, right? Mm -hmm. On the tactical level, what are we doing uh, for our customers? Um, and I think more, more now than ever, that question needs to be answered. And if you cannot answer that question, people will just either like, you know, they'll just leave the NFT in their MetaMask or Trust Wallet or whatever it is and they're like, screw it, I'm out. And they just leave it there. Go to zero. They don't care. And after that, 
you know, they're not going to be part of a community, right? Similar problem you have with DAOs nowadays, right? Where how many people actually bother vote or engaging in the DAOs? They don't care, right? I'm sorry if anybody's building a DAO right now. Um, and I think that's also, you know, one of the things which is your, your, your community slash customers most important. What value are you giving? Because at the end of the day, whether is it 2,000 people, 2 million people, 20,000 people, these people are your biggest salesmen or, or saleswomen. These are your people who literally will spread the word about how, you know, the value of a project, et cetera, et cetera. Similar to what, you know, like Jiang, you're building an aura as well. It's also what the people, the network around are also saying as well about you. I, I think that's a very, very important thing to also realize, especially now. You could get, we could get away with murder in the bull market. That's the truth. But, you know, it's, it's, it's really, you know, the, 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 real, the real good stuff floats to the top. And whether all of us do it, even all three of us sitting on stage, we don't know, right? All I can say is that we'll just do our best. Right, Jack. <laughs> I, I, I just think that uh, for, for user side, so basically uh, everything is just focused on, on the bill first, right? So we, we find more the use case, we, we bring more of the good quality project, we bring, we bring more for user friendly, good user experience, so everything is support for users. So, so I think I do, I do not care about the or the bear market actually, because if we had a good quality project, if we had good in many things, so people will leave it. So I think it is the first thing. The second thing is, okay, Web3 is the future. I, I, I believe that Web3 is the future. NFT is the future, I think so. So we try to bring more the quality things, good technology, good user experience, everything being gone. So I think it should be good for users. So yeah, that's the only thing I want to right. support for users. Yeah. Right, and um, just another question for other people in our audience who might not know too much about NFTs, but I'm more into the crypto side. Uh, I like to ask your views on wh what do you think between, like actually how you said how crypto and NFTs are like intertwined together. Do you, but do you actually think that, um, can, would, would NFTs be able to stand alone without crypto? Like, you know, how um, and if we have seen that NFTs had kind of died down a bit this year following the market conditions in the whole crypto market. So do you think if without, if, if the crypto market doesn't come back up to be very bullish, do you think NFTs could like have its own hype come back up or do you think it's kind of correlated with crypto at all times? Wow. <laughs> Jang, you're going to uh, go first. Hard, hard, to, <laughs> hard to predict. I guess, but I, I, just, just your opinions or your views on it. I don't know. Uh, what raise of hands? What does everybody think? <laughs> really, real, genuine question. Do you think do you think NFTs can stand alone without crypto? That means immune to, to the price of crypto, any form of crypto. I just want to know. Or no opinion. I, 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 oh, I you're just, very very passive crowd like Singapore. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I just think that I I, I don't want to, to, to break it down. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a pair, right? So the more strong for the crypto, the more strong for NFT. So I, I don't want to break it down, right? I, yeah, I, from, I do agree. I do yeah. agree. I think at the end of the day, you know, one of the reasons you see the drawdown in, in, in NFTs is because where's all the liquidity? Because people are, are holding, you know, their ETH or they've moved their ETH in the stables uh, or whatever it is. In fact, some of them are not even holding in the stables. Some of them have totally changed it into fiat because, you know, they, they have a little bit of fat around USDC, USDT, whatever it is, right? So... Um, like it or not, the price of crypto does affect, right? In fact, that whole start of people getting into NFTs, especially the blue chip NFTs, is because you have excess liquidity sitting on the side. And you are like, what can I diversify in, right? And compared to maybe 2018, nobody's going to buy 20, 30 different kind of tokens, right? So I would hold three, five tokens in my bag on average, for example. And, and on top of that, you know, where can I, where can I, you know, I want to keep myself in the same chain or something like that. Where can I invest in? And that's how some of them started buying NFTs. I'm not saying that everybody did, but you know, that was just an example of something which we ourselves observed, um, or even we, we see, you know, in the space over all these years as well. Thank you. So, um, before we end, uh, I'd like you guys to maybe share a message for the people who are just start getting started into the web three, the NFT industry. Do you have you know any advice for them or any suggestions? I just think that everyone did just talk about that Web3 in the, is still in the early stage. But for me, Web3 web actually it happened, right? So you can see that what you happen in Facebook, you, you use Facebook, you have, you are selling your NFT, you use Twitter, you can sell your collectible. 
many thing many thing has been you, you, so you can you can see the Starbucks also have uh, NFT with your polygon so so yeah I think it's okay it's a future but it is happened now so yeah don't 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 think it's in the it's still in the early state let's try let's explore and, uh, and get more feedback for web3 so yeah also if the builder we can yeah, get more the feedback from users so we can understand more about users so you can bring in more the new things bring more for user experience and also many good quality and utility for everyone i think so wow um i think first and foremost any of you who've been in web3 space um actually who in the world even came up with the term web3 doesn't bloody make sense but um for those of you who've been in web3 space for 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 a while thank you for still being here I think that has to be acknowledged. Um, quite a lot of battle scars. Uh, for those of new people who want to come into the space, I, I, I think you really need to ask yourself why you're coming into this space. I said the same thing when I first came to Bangkok in 2010, um, when everybody was talking about startups, right? And every single bloody corporate or bank or, or telco was trying to do a startup accelerator um, over the period of 2010. To, to 2015, right? Obviously, they've all pivoted now to, to, to Web3 because you have to look cool and it's good branding um, and it's valuable. But at the same time, I, I think you've got to ask yourself why do you want to be in this space, right? Um, is it because you want to be at the forefront of technology? Is it because you find it interesting? Where does the passion lie, right? Um, for those of you that really want to enter the space, uh, first myth, um, don't assume that you're gonna like get a 50% pay rise because everybody overpays in crypto. That's absolutely not true. Um, so yeah, sorry, bad news there. Um, I think second point is that um, you, you, the ones that were paid well, by the way, are your like OGs, people who like maybe first 50 employees in Binance and everything like that. Um, or if not, you're like a lawyer that used to work for FTX or something like that. Right, and you're like a launder specialist. Uh, you're not gonna be able to 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 go and get the kind of prices out there. Um, but if you do intend to stay in this industry, you do intend to join this industry, I think it's probably one of the most exciting places to be right now. Um, something new happens every day. Um, I think it, you you will be at the forefront. It's kind of like how if you look at back at it five years, ten years, or something like that, uh, you'll be able to see yourself that you know what I was there at the beginning, and we are still very very early. Is really what I want to say. Thank you very much. Um, before we go, I'd also like to to say a little something that um, from my personal experience, I, I do have to say that NFTs can be a higher risk asset, and compared to the other assets in in this industry and. It, it might be suitable for you or it might not. So what's important is that you do your own research. And, but also at the same time, I think that's also because we're, we're still very early in this industry, like as they said. Um, so because we're very early, we're not, we don't really know what to expect. And it's kind of like we're moving into the unknown together. And I feel like that's also the beauty of, of this whole space. You know, how early we are in this adoption, this, this new innovation. It, which is potentially could be a revolution. So I feel like this is what also keeps us community sticking together. So, and that is why we are here to share about this with you. And, and, and did you want to say something? No, I want to say end? thank you. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I hope you've all um, got, really got something from this session and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for today and have a nice day. Thank you guys. ขอเสียงปรบมือให้กับคุณดิสมากรบุญสิริสกุลนะคะ Miss Mr. k i n g Tan and คุณ Gabriel Yang. Thank you so much, 